Okay, functions class. I thought I'd just make more videos. I'm back. While I'm sitting alone in a room all by myself on a Friday evening, I might as well get some stuff done because we are way behind last year's pace by like a week and a half. Right, I'm going to teach you some algebra. This is another thing that you may have learned. Probably didn't learn this in algebra one. You probably learned this in algebra two, but who knows? And I think every teacher teaches this differently, and my way is the best way. All right, um, so I want to talk about solving inequalities. So let's just jump right in. x squared minus 6x. This works way, way better with a real class. I hate doing this in a room by myself. I hate it so much. But let's do it anyway. x squared minus 6x plus 9 is less than 16. Uh, let's solve this inequality. Well, you should definitely take out a pencil and try these problems by yourself. Um, I can think of two different ways to do this problem. Um, one thing I can think of to do is, well, this happens to be a perfect square trinomial. So this is really like saying x minus 3 squared is less than 16. And I guess uh, if the square of a number is less than 16, then it must mean that that number is between negative 4 and 4. That seems um, reasonable. Yeah. If you square something and you get to the mess of 16, then it must be pretty small. So this is one way to solve this. Now I just add 3 to all three sides of this and I get negative 1 uh, and 7. So I hope that's right, all the numbers between 1 and 7. There is another way to solve this problem, which is to uh, maybe bring the 16 over and like factor or something. So I could take the same problem, x squared minus 6x plus 9 is less than 16, and I could subtract 16 from both sides, so I get x squared, because that seems like one of those algebra 1 things that you're supposed to do, um, bringing stuff over to one side, so I get minus 6x um, minus 7 is negative, and this factors, so I get x minus uh, 7, uh, x plus 1, and that is supposed to be negative. All right, and now we have to kind of think for a minute. Um, I have some number, x minus 7, times some number, x plus 1, and I'm interested in when the product of these two numbers is negative. Well, I know when the product of two numbers will be negative. It will be when one is positive and one is negative. Thus, I'm interested in precisely when x minus 7 is positive and when it's negative, and precisely when this number is positive and when it's negative. So the very tedious analysis of this goes like this. I'm going to divide up all the numbers in the world into the numbers from negative infinity to negative 1, and then the numbers from negative 1 to 7, and then the numbers from 7 to infinity. I think I did this actually one day in class, I'm just remembering right now. And then let's consider the expression x plus 1, and we'll consider the expression x minus 7, and then we'll consider the expression x minus 7, um, x plus 1. Jump. And so basically what I do here is I make a chart and I say, all right, um, what is the value of x plus 1? Well, it's going to be negative for numbers less than, probably shouldn't use green, it's going to be negative for numbers less than negative 1. It's going to be positive for numbers bigger than negative 1. And how about x minus 7? What's well, going to be negative? until I get to 7, but for numbers bigger than 7, it will be positive. And therefore, the product of these two negatives will be positive, negative, positive. And that tells me that the answer is all the numbers between negative 1 and 7. Okay, let's do a couple more of these. Um, this is definitely a watch this on two times speed situation. x squared plus 2x is greater than 3. Um, this is basically the same thing, right? So solve this. I'm just going to put like four of these up on the board. Um, solve this. So you should either like hit pause and do these or just try to go faster than me. Um, yeah. So we'll do even one more. Okay, 
So yeah, uh, x squared plus 2x is greater than 3. Here it seems like the thing to do, again, is to subtract 3 from both sides. And um, now I can factor this. So this is x minus, no, plus 3, x minus 1. Yes. And now I want to know when the product of these two numbers is positive. So again, the long way is to say, take all the numbers between negative infinity and negative 3, then take all the numbers from negative 3 to 1, then take all the numbers from 1 to infinity, and we will analyze x plus 3, x minus 1, and x plus 3, x minus 1 um, on these various intervals. And I see that x plus 3 will be negative until negative 3 and positive thereafter, and x minus 1 will be negative until 1 and positive thereafter, so the product will be positive, negative, and positive. And thus, the solution to this problem is uh, all the numbers from negative infinity to negative 3, and all the numbers from 1 to infinity. And that is the correct answer. There's also a faster way. The faster way is you just like kind of know what these functions look like. Um, like this, this x plus three, x minus one. Well, just let's just consider the parabola y equals x plus three, x minus one. You probably just like know what that parabola looks like, right? What does it look like? Well, it has a root at negative three and it has another root at one, and so the parabola just has to look like that. And therefore, it's going to be positive, obviously, here and here. That's like the short way. Um, okay, more. Uh, for x, let's see, make sure, still like in view and everything. Let's do a little bit of this. Um, here we go. 4x cubed minus 12x squared. Well, now I'll factor out of 4x squared, and I'm left with x minus 3. Um, yes. Uh, the 4 can just be thrown away, you just can divide both sides by 4. That seems like a good idea. They really have something like that. Um, now I have a couple of options here. Um, well, there aren't really so many. There's not really that much going on. Um, the fact that x squared means it's always going to be positive uh, or 0. Um, how should we even do this? I guess all that really matters is, um, well, I guess I'll just do it the long way. So I'll consider all the numbers from negative infinity to zero, all the numbers from zero to three, and all the numbers from three to infinity. We're doing this the super tedious way. And then I'll just look at these two guys. I'll look at x squared, and I'll look at x minus three, and therefore I'll look at the product, x squared, x minus three. Um, well, uh, x squared is just always going to be positive, right? So it sort of has no effect on the, on the chart in a certain sense, um, which you might even be inclined to just leave it off the analysis entirely because it's simply going to be always in a positive expression. Um, and x minus 3 will be negative until 3 and positive thereafter, so the product is just going to be you know, negative, negative, positive. Uh, and so when am I going to be greater than or equal to 0? Well, at first you might say just numbers from 3 to infinity, um, but now including 3, because when x actually is 3, um, certainly it's true. And then also the little trick here is that when x is 0, it's also a um, solution to the inequality. So you have to kind of consider the test cases individually. Okay, let's look at number 4. Now number 4 is different. It is not a polynomial. Uh, it's some kind of like rational function or something like that. So this might, this looks hard for about 2 seconds until you realize that the logic is exactly the same. I have some fraction, I'd like to know when that fraction is negative. Um, well, that fraction will be negative whenever precisely one of the numerator and denominator are um, positive and one negative. And so the analysis is exactly the same. I'm just going to split up all the numbers from negative infinity to negative 5, all the numbers from negative 5 to 3, and all the numbers from 3 to infinity. And I will consider the expression x minus 3, and I'll consider the expression x plus 5. It is relevant to me um, in what position these um, expressions lie, the numerator and denominator, in order to determine what their sign is. Um, so, x, so x minus 3 is going to be negative 
until 3 and positive thereafter, x minus 5 will be negative until negative 5 and positive thereafter. So here the factor will be positive, here negative, and here positive. And so therefore the solution to this inequality is everything between negative 5 and 3. Okay, let's do one slightly harder. Um, so, and now this is something which, I mean, if you haven't done algebra 2, then you've definitely never done this before, I would say. Um, so for those of you who haven't done algebra 2, this will be exciting. Uh, here's an inequality, uh, let's call that 5, I guess. Um, x plus 12 over x plus 2 is greater than or equal to 3. Now, guys, let's, let's have a real talk. It is very tempting. It is very tempting to uh, multiply both sides of this inequality by x plus 2. Um, but we have to resist that temptation because um, that will lead to invalid results. And the idea here is, though we hate fractions and we generally would like to do that, um, when I multiply both sides of an inequality by something positive, um, that preserves the inequality. When I multiply both sides of an inequality by something negative, I have to flip the sign. And actually, you can do a quick axiomatic proof of that, by the way. Uh, so, since I have to flip the sign when I multiply by something negative, I can't multiply by x plus 2 because I do not know whether x, I do not know what x is, therefore I do not know the sign of x plus 2. So I could split this up into like cases, but that just gets like ugly and terrible. So the way to do this is just to never do that. Instead, what we do is um, we bring the 3 over to the other side, so we just subtract 3. And now I take this expression um, and I just get a common denominator. And analyze it as is. So I'll just keep doing this. That's um, x plus 12 minus 3x plus 6. Uh, so that's negative 2x plus 6 over x plus 2. Um, and now I'll probably do one more thing, which is to factor out a negative 2. Seems like a good idea. And now I would even do another thing, which is to make this really nice and pretty. Divide both sides by negative 2. And so I get x minus 3 over x plus 2 is less than or equal to 0. Now it's just a matter of solving this inequality. Okay, and I think we kind of just already know the answer at this point. It's going to be all the numbers uh, between negative 2 and 3. Uh, 3 inclusive, negative 2 exclusive, because it's done. Um, yep. Good. Uh, so. That is solving inequalities. I just skipped the chart that time because I did it in my head. How? Because I'm smart. I'll show you shortcuts later. Okay, let's do three more problems on the backboard so that we become masters of solving inequalities. Very important topic. Uh, here is one. This is number six, I guess. Uh, 5 plus 7x over 1 plus 2x is less than 4. Uh, then I'll leave a lot of space and I'll give one more problem. So you should do all of these. If you're faster than me, which is probably most of you, then you can just keep the video running. If you're slower than me, then you should pause the video. Now here's the last problem, and then the video will be off. Now I give you functions, and I ask you for the domains of their composites, and you can like do this now. So what I want is uh, the domain of uh, G composed F, 
and I would like the domain of f composed g, and I'm sure that's in camera. Uh, it isn't, but now it is. Okay, so do these three problems. I will do them now, and I'll try not to mess up. Here I would factor out a negative, and down here I would factor out a 2. That also just kind of makes it easier on you. Uh, kind of a weird problem. Yeah, so, mm -hmm. and now finally I'll multiply both sides by 2 and divide both sides by the negative. So the final thing I end up with is x minus 1, x plus a half is positive. Flipping the sign. Um, I'm living like terror that it made some really embarrassing mistake, and um, like seven boys from Tacoma are just like giggling uncontrollably at me. But this looks good, I think. Mm -hmm. Yep. So when is that positive? Again, I kind of go through my analysis of all the numbers from negative infinity to negative a half all the numbers from a half, from negative a half to one, and all the numbers from one to infinity, x minus, x plus a half, and is going to go uh, negative, positive, positive, and x minus one is going to go negative, negative, positive. And so the quotient will be positive over here and over here. And so my answer is everything from negative infinity to negative a half, Union, everything from one to infinity. Okay, hopefully that's right. Uh, number seven is looking pretty fancy. Let's do it. Now I need to get a common denominator, so. Factor out a negative 5, x minus 6, down here I get x minus 3, and I'll probably factor out a 4 too, and an x plus 3 fourths. And I can multiply both sides by 4, and I can divide both sides by 5, so the numbers are just kind of irrelevant. And then that negative, I'm going to multiply both sides by negative 1, flipping the sign. And so I get x minus 6 over x minus 3, x plus 3 fourths, and I want to know if that is greater than or equal to 0. Um, so all the old rules apply, I just now have a more complicated chart. I need to consider all the numbers from negative infinity to negative 3 fourths, all the numbers from negative 3 fourths to 3, all the numbers from 3 to 6, and all the numbers from 6 to infinity. And I have to consider all the things. Um, x plus 3 fourths expression, the x minus 3 expression, the x minus 6 expression, and then the whole thing. x plus 3 fourths will go negative, positive, positive, positive. x minus 3 will go negative, negative positive, positive, x minus 6 will go negative, 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 positive, and thus the 
uh, product of all three of them will be negative, positive, negative, positive. And thus will be greater than or equal to zero here and here from negative three-fourths to three and from six to infinity. And I do want to include six as a solution, but I need to exclude those two because the expression is undefined. Man, I hope all that was in the frame. It was um, good. Pause if you have a problem. Last thing that we will do, and then we will be done with this video. And that is, yikes, uh, this problem. This problem right here, I give you two functions, that's for the domain of their composites in both directions. So, let's do it. Um, G composed F. But F into G is 4 over root x minus 3 minus 2. Well, this problem we have done a long time ago, right? Certainly, it must be true that x is greater than or equal to 3, but also I can't crash this. I'll crash this if this is a if this is a 2, and this will be a 2 if the inside is a 4, and the inside will be a 4 if x is like a 7, right? So x cannot be 7. 7 minus 3, 4, 2, yup. And so the answer is everything from 3 uh, to 7, and everything from 7 to infinity. All right, so that was a problem I already knew how to do, but now um, this was g composed f. What about f composed? G. F composed G says put G into F, so this is going to be root 4 over x minus 2 minus 3. Now I avoided giving you problems like this like three weeks ago when we were doing, or I guess it was only really only like two weeks ago when I was giving you these composition problems because uh, you didn't really know how to do it yet, although we did actually do one. It's really not that hard. So this involves solving inequality. When does 4 over x minus 2 minus 3, when is that going to be greater than or equal to 0? And now I know how to solve this. Um, so this becomes minus 3x plus 2, getting a common denominator. Uh, and it's just going to work out, right? 4 minus 3x plus 6. 10 minus 3x over x minus 2. Um, to factor yeah. I'll factor out a negative 3, so I get negative 3x minus 10 thirds, uh, yep, all over x minus 2. I will divide both sides by negative 3, and therefore what I really end up with is x minus 10 thirds all over x minus 2 is less than or equal to 0. And when is that going to happen during this one in my head? It's going to be everything between 2 and 10 thirds, including 10 thirds, not including 2. All right, this um, concludes our, let's see, I don't even know how long this was, 23-minute lesson on inequalities. This one I feel like I did really fast. In class, I feel like I spent a lot longer on this. But anyway, um, oh, I think something terrible just happened. No, maybe not. Um, all right. Uh, functions class, um, goodbye. Um, consider this to be a um, 23 minutes in of the eventual 90 minutes behind that we are because of PSAT day. Goodbye. Have a nice weekend doing your math homework.